Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 43 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. So, last episode, how did we make out? Uh, we made out pretty well, actually. We got ourselves a walnut tree. Nice. Uh, the walnut tree is going to drop walnuts. Now, uh, it's been a, you know, the server's been offline since the last time I played, so that's why none have dropped yet. But we're going to come back and check on this thing, you know, probably a little bit later between, uh, you know, the time I check out, uh, maybe the, towards the end of the episode, we'll stop by. So this episode, like, we have this one walnut tree, and hey, that's great. But maybe we want some more. Uh, so let's get ourselves um, a nice way to automate some of the production of walnuts and collecting them. So I've got my, uh, you know, handy little guy here just hanging out. Good job, buddy. Uh, you're just a simple wood golem worker, but you know what? You're still doing a good job. So you keep on picking up the walnuts that drop out of that tree. I'm kind of curious to see how it goes. And I think this is a good opportunity, though, to show you guys some of the multi-block structures you can make uh, with forestry, which allows you to do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, now, you can have all kinds of different farms within your forestry multi-block. So we're going to show you guys how to uh, do pretty much all the multi-block stuff. Otherwise, uh, we should be auto-producing a good amount of bee stuff. You can see we, uh, you know, at the end of last episode, threw some bees in here. Looks like they've almost all been analyzed at this point and we've uh, collected ourselves a good amount of liquid DNA so now that that stack is done I'm gonna kind of go through and clear out some more stacks of bees I'm just gonna grab you know a handful of them because we don't really need much of these um, I might want to hang on to I don't know maybe want to hang on to a few bees just because so maybe I'll hang on to just some ones that I might want to you know be interested in having so maybe over here this chest that I've been storing you know my steadfast drones and my frames Maybe I'll put a couple just important bee species in. So before we, you know, go ahead and clear out all of them, uh, I'm just going to grab for now, you know, half a stack of what I consider some of the important species. So we've got some industrious drones. That's probably a good one to grab. Um, and I don't think I really need much else. Yeah, that should be good. So I'll hang on to these for later, because when we get to the uh, genetic manipulation stuff, we're going to want those bees, because they have some good genetic traits that we're probably going to want to get our hands on and uh, do stuff with. So for now, just going to put these guys in the analyzer, getting ready to analyze a bunch of bees and, uh, you know, turn them all into liquid DNA. Cool. So let's talk about forestry multi-block farms. Where should I build this? Well, I think right back here behind my house is as good a place as any. So I'm going to clear out a little bit of the terrain. Uh, let's go dig into our bag here and find our good friend the axe of the stream. Clear out some of these trees. I know we've got like some rubber wood trees here, but I think I'm doing well enough on rubber now that I don't have to worry about it. So we're okay. And you can see my wood golem worker sprang into action. He's like, oh, direwolf, let me help you pick up all that wood. And he's like, ah, never mind. Okay, I see you got stuff. All right, so I'll be back in a few once I've gotten everything I need to get started with this cool stuff. All right. All right, guys, so here we go. There are a bunch of multi-farm blocks that you can make. Uh, and you can see in my inventory here, I have a bunch of the stuff that's associated uh, opened up on the screen. So let's sleep through this night, and we're going to go ahead and check out all the cool stuff you can make. Now you can make these multi-block farms out of a couple different types of blocks. Specifically, uh, you can use um, stone bricks, mossy stone bricks, cracked stone bricks, um, the, the clay bricks, and you can also do uh, smooth and chiseled sandstone, nether brick, or uh, yeah, that's about it. There we go. So we got it all. Okay, so those are the different ones we can use. Now I'm going to go ahead and just use, uh, let's see, what is the recipe for these? Are they going to show up? Yeah, they're not going to show up in any eye at the moment, uh, but what I can do is do chiseled stone bricks. Let's see, is that easy to make? Oh, yeah, it's easy. Let's use chiseled stone bricks. That sounds like a good plan, right? So I'm actually going to get myself, uh, you know, a good number of those guys. Let's do, I'm thinking I'm going to need how many of these exactly. Uh, I want to build the largest multi-block structure available, which is 5 by 5 by 4. So we're going to need about 100 of these. Uh, so this should easily do it, okay? So there we go. Nice. So we've got a bunch of these. So how do we make these blocks? Well, it's really not too bad. Uh, the recipe for them is pretty easy. We're going to need ourselves a bunch of copper. So I'm going to grab, like I said, we're going to need about 100, right? So I'm going to grab a bunch of copper. I'm going to throw, for now, this in here. We're going to need more smooth stone in a bit, but for now this will work, okay? So we're going to need some copper, and we're going to need some uh, tin. We're going to need a good amount of tin and some redstone, I think. A good amount of redstone. Uh, and we're going to need some wooden slabs. So let me get some wood. That's okay. Let's sneak outside real quick and grab some extra wood. That should be plenty. 
Oh, so close. One of these days, I'm telling you, I'm going to make it through. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so first we're going to need, um, like I said, we're going to need 5 by 5 by 4. So that's exactly 100 that we're going to need here. So for this, we're going to need 100 uh, tin electron tubes. Okay, so let's make some. Uh, I'm just going to start off with, I want to say, is it this that does the tin electron tube? Hold on, let's see. Will this recipe show up in any eye? Yeah, it does. Nice. Okay. So uh, you can see here we've got in the thermionic fabricator, we need tin ingots and we need redstone. Okay. So I did do that right, but I forgot that I had disabled uh, this guy. So let's enable the power flow. And that's going to let power start flowing into here again. Remember I told you thermionic fabricator drains a good amount of power all the time. So you don't want to have it on unless you're actually ready to go with it. Now, how many of these do we get at a time? Let's see. Okay. We get four. So that's not so bad. All right, so let's throw some more of this in here. Um, and what I'm going to do is one, two, three, four, five. We're going to need, like I said, about 100 of these. Okay, so that's 64. And we're going to need about 36 more. Oh, I was so close. So close. Just a little bit more. Tiff. So quite an expensive item, as you can tell. But, you know, going to be pretty awesome. It's going to allow us to do a lot of good stuff. And like I said, I'm going for the largest available. Uh, in reality, you could go uh, with a little bit smaller of a version. There we go. I got a couple extra there. No biggie. So we've got now 100 of these 10 electron tubes. I've got plenty of copper. I've got my stone uh, chiseled bricks because they look fancy. It's about as fancy as Darwolf gets. All right, guys. Um, and then we're going to need about, uh, you know, 200 copper, actually. So if we want, yeah, that's a lot. So we're going to need more copper. Oh, boy. We're going to have to start running our quarry again, huh? All right. That should be pretty darn close. And, yeah, now I'm starting to question if I want to go for this big of a size. Let me see if I should make this smaller, because this is going to kill me on resources at this point. All right, instead of going for the max size, I'm going to go for a slightly smaller size. We're going to see. Maybe down the line we'll increase this a little bit. But for now, I think we're good here. So let's see. I'm going to go with, uh, we're going to need about 60 of these blocks instead of 100. Like I said, maybe we'll bump it up later down the line. Who knows? So there we go. We're going to get uh, 60 chiseled stone brick farm blocks. Awesome. Uh, so let's go put these into a multi-block structure outside and see how to use it. Uh, now, in order to go with this size, uh, we're going to wind up with about a 15 by 17 area. Um, so I'm going to build it along here somewhere, probably just right along this thing. So let's see if we want 15 by 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks in this direction here. Okay, that's 15. Uh, one, two, three, four five, six, seven blocks in this direction. So this should wind up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Excellent. See how that works out? All right, now for 17, we need to count eight. So let me do that real quick off camera. All right, so here's what we're talking about. So this is where I'm going to have the very center of my multi-block structure. And I've got my block multi-blocks here now. So let's go ahead and start planting them. So again, we want a 3 by 5 by 4. Okay, so uh, and we wanted this direction to be the larger one. Okay, so we're going to do the 5 um, here like that. Okay, so this is the very center, and this should work like so. So 3 by 5 by 4. Cool. And multi-blocks are neat because they allow for some really cool stuff to be made. Um, um, multi-block structures are kind of becoming like a big trend right now. There's a lot of mods looking at um, using multi-block structures for like, you know, intelligent design things. It's a cool idea because it allows you to, um, you know, charge expensive amount of resources appropriately. Like some blocks are just way too powerful to be in one block form. And you can't, you know, it's a little boring to say like, hey, you have to make like a thousand different recipes to put together one block. So so instead, it's giving you the multi-block. Now, once the band forms around the outer edge here, the multi-block is formed. So it usually takes a second or two for uh, the server to catch up and realize, hey, you made a multi-block. Whoa, complicated recipe. Don't worry, we're going to make some cool stuff and uh, we're going to show you exactly uh, how this recipe system works. Now, we're going to have to swap out some of these multi-blocks for other things because uh, what we want to make here are some uh, 
other input mechanisms. So you can see there's other farm blocks here. First off, for example, we've got the gearbox. That's going to be important because that's where you send power into. Okay, so we're going to wind up grabbing, uh, you know, the the bricks farm gearbox. I'm sure there's a chiseled one around here somewhere. I have to get the recipe on these. It looks like they're not looking up properly in any eye. Uh, but you've also got um, gearboxes. You've got farm hatches. You've got um, valves. You've got a bunch of other things that we're going to need to check out. So why don't I get together and make sure I have everything I need. Sleep through the night here because it's getting a little late and then we'll uh start making this farm work for us and you know what guys i think i'm actually going to change something up a little bit i'll be right back all right guys one of the cool things about these multi-block farms is you can actually um you know set up the farmland to plant either on on any one side of the block so if i wanted to i could set the farmland to plant out up here um so we've got that really tall block structure right like it's four blocks tall um, we could plant the farm land anywhere along those blocks. So we could either plant it here, which is what I had it set up to do a minute ago, or we could plant it um, on this level, this level, or this level. You cannot plant it any higher, though. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Oh, thanks, Gollum. You're picking stuff up. Hey, speaking of Gollum, how's the chestnut trade doing? Nothing yet. Okay, well, give him some time. He'll manage. All right, so uh, if I build these guys down here like this... That should multi-block form for me in a moment. And uh, once it does, we'll be able to set up um, the farm underground. And then we can, uh, you know, do all our item transport and all the other stuff that we were going to do down here. So let's set this up like that. Cool. And this guy should reform in just a moment. We'll see the, the black stripe show up around the edges, and then we'll know it's working. There we go. Cool. Um, let's set up down here for our uh, area that we're going to have cool things be. That's what I'm naming this. The area with cool things. Sound like a plan? I thought you wouldn't complain. Also, I just decided to dig back and find where my underground workshop is. It's right there. Cool. Just in case I need to go through for any reason. But, uh, yeah, let's see. I'm thinking, like, on this side we might want to have um, where all the access and stuff happens. Because we're going to need a couple things just to get this farm working. We're going to need to supply it with water. We're going to need to supply it with power. And we're going to need to supply it with some items sometimes. So better make sure we're ready for this with a nice cleared out area. Okay. So I'm going to grab, let's see, I need power, water, and items. So I guess I might as well grab a few things here. Um, I'm going to steal this corner. And I'm going to steal this block right here. And I'll probably steal, uh, let's say, at a random choice, this block right here. Okay? And I'll be back once I've got a few things to help me out. All right, guys. So like I said, we're going to need a couple extra blocks here. First off, I need to get myself uh, this guy right here is the farm valve. Important block in that uh, what he does is he allows me to put liquids into my uh, farm. So we need to put water in there, right? Farms need water. That's what the farm valve is for. It says hook up some kind of water to this block in the multi-block structure. Next up, we're going to need a farm gearbox. This is where we connect our power to. Farm gearboxes accept power from buildcraft pipes or thermal expansion pneumatic tubes, or in my case, I'm going to use the energy tesseract that I've got going here. And then finally, we need a farm hatch. This is your chiseled stone bricks. Uh, you can see them right there. And uh, what this guy does is uh, he allows items to be pumped in and out out of the farm. Cool. Uh, now I'm going to use this multi-block for a couple of things, but let's go back outside here. Oh good, it's still daytime. Didn't take me that long to get those items together, thankfully. Let's go get some water real quick from my uh, little lake right next to my house. Because remember, we're going to need two buckets of water down here for the aqueous accumulator to stay happy. So if this is where the farm um, valve is going to go, right here. So this is the way the multi-block works. You just replace the blocks like so. Okay, what I'm going to hook up is a liquid duct. And I'm going to get these guys ready to go. Cool. So right here, we're going to want this. And we're going to want this. And then we're going to want the aqueous accumulator right there. That guy should immediately start filling up with good amounts of water. And then we can place right there. And now, if we look at our multi-block, well, we won't in a minute, but we will. All right, so let's get our gearbox and our uh, this guy going here. So gearbox, I want the power input to be on this side. So this block here will accept power. And then finally, uh, to get this thing working, I need this block right here to pump items in and out. Now, as soon as this multi-block forms, we should see... Oh, yeah, it is getting dark out. I knew it would soon. 
There we go, it formed. Look, we've got water flowing in. Excellent. You could, of course, put water in using water capsules or whatever, but you know what? Aqueous accumulators really do a nice job of uh, collecting water for us. Now, as you guys have uh, you know learned in the past, of course, we could just be using a pump with an infinite water source, but uh, just the way ticks work on servers and single player um, and the way chunk loading happens every now and then, that can be a problem. So the aqueous accumulator is the solution. It kind of you know prevents uh, any accidental uh, extra collection of water. Okay, so there we go. We're up and running. So now we've got this farm. Uh, next up, we're going to want to power it. Um, but you know what? We've got some things to do. Let me uh, figure out what I want to put up next because we can actually grow multiple things on this farm. And I know for sure one of those is going to be an orchard where I'm going to collect all my stuff um, from the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the walnut tree. Um, I might want to throw another farm or two on there as well. I'm thinking maybe transfer my rubber plantation over. I'm just kind of interested to see uh, how the rubber plantation works in this farm. I'm kind of curious. So yeah, we'll check it out. So I'll be back in just a few moments to do that. All right, guys, so the next item I want to make here is this one. It's called the Intricate Circuit Board. It's the most complex circuit board available uh, at the time being uh, in forestry. So let's take a look at the circuit boards in NEI here. You'll see there's the basic one, which you've already used. We've also got Enhanced, um, Refined, and Intricate. Intricate, of course, being, like I said, the most complex. Now, the thing about these different circuit boards is you can program them with electron tubes, and the way to do that is to use the soldering iron. Now, this guy's not too hard to make. Uh, you just need a piece of bronze and three iron in that carpenter again. So let's get that. One uh, bronze and three iron. Cool. Okay, so let's do this. Just clear this stuff out of the way. And iron. Cool. Soldering iron, here you come. Now we use the soldering iron to solder uh, circuits onto the circuit board. Uh, we've already seen plenty of circuits actually, but uh, you probably haven't seen these guys. So let's see, uh, it's the electron tubes that we have to solder on there. Now there's a bunch of them, as you can see, of electron tubes in the later versions of forestry. In the past, there were only a few. Um, so let's get this guy out here and check it out. So the way this works is real easy. Uh, you can see right here, you're getting an error message. There's no circuit board to solder onto. But if we uh, you know, toggle through, uh, all we gotta do is uh, put your intricate circuit board in there like that. And uh, you can see that there are three types of things you can do. The electrical engine. So uh, we haven't done much with electrical engines yet, but we will at some point, I'm sure. You can also have managed farms. Managed farms are the farms that go into this multi-block farm structure, and they're automatically maintained, much like our existing forestry farms. Uh, there's a bunch of different types of managed farms. You can get the uh, arboretum, the peat bog, the crop farm, the vegetable farm, the infernal farm, and the shroom farm. Uh, I might want to get a shroom farm just for fun, because they're cool looking. All right, um, after that, we've got uh, the manual farms. Now there's a little bit more to that. Um, you have all the same farm types that you had before, but you can also get cactus and sugarcane and rubber um, and pumpkin and melon seed farms. And basically what those guys will do um, is instead of the managed farms, uh, the manual farms will not plant the soil for your crops to grow. It has to be placed manually, but it will plant and harvest the crops in its radius. So what that means is when you have a manual farm, it won't put down soil for you, but it will maintain your crops. It'll do, you know, whatever it needs to do. So what I want to do is grab um, some more of these uh, common walnut saplings, okay? And I want to get myself uh, a soldering iron, and I want to get uh, the stuff needed for my farm. So let's map this out. Basically, the way this works is you have four sides to this multi-block structure. And you'll note that right now, with the default, each side requires a managed arboretum. So, uh, you know, all four sides are going to do this, the standard arboretum structure. So without a circuit board, you can have just a regular tree farm on all four sides. But we want different sides to do different things. So let's say we want orchards on the right and the top. So I'm going to do two orchard farms. And I think I want a mushroom farm just for fun. So let's put that over on the left side here. Um, now these correspond to the direction we're facing of north, south, east, and west. So north is right here. Okay. So we could have a north. Let's do north and east. Sure. Why not? Yeah, I guess that'll be all right. It's getting dark out too. Yeah, and then I want the mushroom farm just for fun, and maybe we'll even have um, a blazing farm which can do nether wart. So let's do that. Yeah, two orchards, a mushroom, and a blazing. 
okay? And I'll show you guys how to line up um, your circuit board with these things. So in order to do this, what I need is two copper electron tubes. I'm gonna need a blazing electron tube. And, uh, oh, you know what? I think I can't have a mix of um, automatic and manual, can I? Yeah, I don't think I can. Just because of the way the interface works here, I can't have managed and manual together. Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna have to go all manual on this one, aren't I? Um, all right, give me a second. All right, guys, I decided for this one, I'm going to do just a full-blown orchard. So all four sides will be orchards. So I'm just going to need four copper electron tubes, and it's really easy to set up. Uh, just place your four electron tubes here, set this to manual farms, and we're going to set down, you can see here, that we've got orchards. So it tells you what it is when you place the item in there. Neat. All right. Now, uh, this block here corresponds to north, south, west, and east. So if you were going to have different types of farms set up, that's how you would do it, is north, south, west, and east. And I'll probably have an automated farm at some point, just to show you. Now, the trick with the soldering iron is you want to lay out the uh, tubes exactly how you want them before you put your intricate circuit board in, because boom, the moment you place it in that slot, it's going to apply it. So there we go. Intricate farm, four orchards, that's how we do it. Okay, so uh, orchards are going to need dirt, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how this works. So all I got to do is place the intricate farm in here. Cool, and look at that. It changes all four sides to orchards. Nice. Okay, uh, now we are going to need some fertilizer here to maintain this thing, but don't worry, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, all I have to do now is manually lay out my farm the way I want. Now, I don't think this will clear terrain for me because it's a manual farm. You know what? I have an idea. Let's get the circuit board out of here. To get the circuit board out of a structure, you have to click on it with the soldering iron. Boom, it comes right out. I'm going to apply the power to this thing. So where's my energy tesseract? I want to see with it in uh, farm mode if it will automatically uh, apply some power. So let's hook this up to our main power line, and we're going to say uh, receive only. Again, I could leave it in send receive mode, but I'm just, you know, silly about that. All right, so let's see if this clears out the terrain for me. If it doesn't, then I'll just have to do it manually. All right, I wasn't sure if this would uh, automatically clear out some terrain or not. It turns out that it doesn't. So uh, that's okay, though, because this is really easy to do. I want to show you guys what's important here. Uh, what we need to do is lay out somewhere along this line uh, some items along this line. Uh, you can use for this almost anything that you can use in the multi-blocks. You can use stone bricks or chiseled, cracked, mossy, smooth sandstone, chiseled sandstone, bricks, and nether bricks. And what we need to do is lay this out like so. Now, here's the pattern for the large farm. This is the largest it can be. Uh, of course, what you could do is do more or less. If you, Or well, you can do less, but you can't do more than what I'm about to show you here. So uh, from here we can go one, two, three, four, five. So let's do that. Um, you know, we can do one, two, three, four, five. And we can do one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now you have to plant down these uh, stone bricks in order for the farm to know where its structured area is. And any walnuts yet? Still no yet. Okay. So in order for this farm to know where to put things, it has to have bricks down. That's kind of like telling the farm, hey, here's where things are supposed to go. All right. So let me lay out this area and I'll be right back. All right, guys, thanks to the Wand of Equal Trade, I think I've got pretty much the laid out area. So basically what this farm can do is it can do, uh, you know, 15 by 17, like we said. So, uh, you know, you're, you you want to line out to here. It was one, two, three, four, five, six blocks in every direction. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's a nice big area that, uh, you know your farms can grow in. Uh, now to get this to work, you have to plant dirt on top of all these things, okay? So because this is a manual farm, you have to manually put down the dirt itself. But the good news is that the orchard can run on dirt, so we don't need to supply it humus, uh, which is kind of nice. So for now, let's put this stuff down. Um, and what it should do is it should start detecting that there's dirt nearby uh, in its plantable terrain area. So I'm going to open up this interface again. I'm going to put the manual farm back in. And this direction right here, of course, is west. Okay, And we can plant our uh, common saplings, I want to say this lot. Now it's telling me no fertilizer right now, so let's go get a stack of that. Steal a stack of fertilizer from that automated farm that we made. And fertilizer goes down here. Cool. Now are we happy? Now there's different hydration levels. It's determined by the heat and the humidity of the environment you're in and how much rainfall there is. So like, you know, the drier the desert, if you're in a desert, uh, it will require more water than if you're in like a nice swampland like I'm in. Cool. So I think this thing should start running in a minute. Now I'm actually not too sure if uh, the... Um, 
if this farm configuration with the orchard will automatically plant the uh, the walnut saplings for us. So I'm going to do it myself. Uh, what I'm going to do is plant down one, two, three, four, and then I can do a similar thing over here, and that should turn out pretty good. I'm going to go get a few more walnut saplings and see what kind of trouble I can get into with this. Oh, hey, good news. I came over to the uh, walnut tree, and it looks like one of my walnut leaves has started to mature. You can see them turning a darker color. Like I said, over a period of time, they'll become a darker color, and then hopefully walnuts should start falling here. We're going to kind of see which one we do uh, better with, uh, you know, this thing or this thing. And in breaking the leaves that had the uh, matured walnuts on them, we got a few, so that's cool. But now I've got some common walnut saplings, just a few more of them, thanks to the grafters. And uh, I'm going to plant them all around here, and hopefully uh, this thing will work out. So now I'm going to clear away a little bit more terrain just to make sure things look nice, and then we should be doing pretty good. Nope, I didn't want those there. Maybe I want to put these... That looks cool. Excellent. That'll look pretty nice, I think. Do we want one more, like, right in the middle here or something? Uh, I don't know. You know, the more sapling, or the more leaves, I guess, the better when it comes to this thing. So, there's probably a slightly more efficient way to go with it, but we'll see how this works out for now, and hey, maybe we'll just have to chop it down with the X of the stream in a bit. Get some of that cool wood anyway, right? So let's just get a little bit more bone meal. And we should be good to go with this stuff. And then my goal here is that this farm, nice and compact, we're going to grow some walnut trees. And it ought to look pretty nice. Okay, this thing doesn't want to grow this close to this. Yeah, it's a little too tall right there. All right, cool. We've got walnuts going on, I think, I hope. All right, so we've got our multi-block farm structure set up, and it's running at the moment, and it's going to basically sit here and collect all the walnuts uh, that fall out of these trees. Now, this one's a little far away for the automatic collection to go, which is why we have the wooden golem here. He's probably crying right now. Yep, there he is. So still no walnuts have fallen from this tree automatically, but we've now got a massive amount of trees here. Hopefully these three giant trees will uh, get us a good amount of walnuts. Now let me go squeeze these two walnuts that I got just to show you how nice of a seed oil supply we're going to start getting from these walnut trees, okay? So uh, here we go. Two walnuts go in. The squeezer should give me like a good amount of liquid seed oil. Uh, I think we get like uh, about a bucket's worth maybe. So yeah, way more uh, liquid seed oil comes in here. It gets us a good amount, definitely better than seeds. Nice. All right, guys, so for now, I want to leave this farm connected up just the way it is. Uh, we've got, you know, um, we didn't hook up this piece right here, which is where we can pump items into and out of the farm. We're going to do that in a future episode, because right now I want to kind of keep an eye on how many walnuts we're producing. We haven't gotten too many here, but, you know, hopefully pretty soon we'll start to get some. Of course, I cleared away a few of the leaves, but we can see most of them are starting to get a little bit darker uh, in color. You can see these are browning a little bit more than the bright. Um, you know, greener ones that are over there. This one's a good indication that it's definitely getting close to ripened. Cool. Like I said, you can go ahead and break the leaves if you want, but I believe that it should start dropping walnuts on the ground, and then we can come by and collect them uh, with our wooden golems, or in the case of this guy, the farm. Awesome. So this farm we're going to use um, for a couple more things. I'd like to have uh, more of an orchard going on. Uh, maybe a couple other uh, different types of trees that can go ahead and be planted on other sides of that farm so that it can collect more cool stuff. Sound like a good plan? All right. All right, guys, with that, I think we've reached a pretty good wrapping up point for this episode, I'm sorry to say. Um, hey, wait a second, this chest is empty. What's going on here? Oh, boy, our steam boiler is completely out of fuel, steam, and heat. That's not good. What happened to our peat bog? I'm thinking my peat bog is just not keeping up with the steam boiler, even though it's a low pressure. You can see there's still some peat going in there, but it's just not enough to keep up. We're really gonna have to either get our blaze farm going again, or maybe some more peat. Um, I could set up an automated multi-block here for more peat. That might be all right. Um, but, you know, this is a pretty big farm and we're still not doing enough with it. So yeah, you can see there it's, you know, collecting stuff, doing stuff, all right. Hmm, that's gonna be tricky for us. All right, we're gonna have to figure out a solution to that, but Oh, that's cool. I haven't looked at my uh, 
tank from outside. How are we doing with our liquid DNA? Good, we've got a good amount of the stuff so far. That's definitely going to play a big role in some upcoming stuff. Uh, like I said, we're saving most of the stuff that we need to save here. So I can go ahead and, uh, you know, trash everything else. Oh, good. How's this? Did we clear out? Yeah, we did. Need more honey, though. I think we're getting low on uh, honey. Not a big deal. We'll manage to squeeze some more. And then pretty soon we'll be able to start working on uh, this setup here. So we're going to do the extra bees stuff. Uh, we have uh, some more things. Uh, what I want to do, I think, is create an automated enchanting machine. Uh, right now I've got this nifty setup here where these uh, brains and jars collect experience for me, which is great. Don't get me wrong. They're doing a good job, but it's a little too manual. I have to keep running over here, clicking on the brain, getting myself some uh, experience, and then manually enchanting the book. So with the new version of the Direwolf 20 mod pack, version 5.0, 1.1 that we're on now, uh, there is an automated way to enchant items and more importantly, books. So I think I'm going to want to set up an automated enchanting system pretty darn soon. Um, and then aside from that, I still want to get over to the Twilight Forest and inspect some things over there. I hear it's a pretty awesome place to see, so I definitely want to get that going. And we still not started working on any kind of a frame machine. You can see I'm obviously starting to get low on resources, so at some point soon, I might need a frame tunnel bore or something along Along those lines. So I know you guys have seen me make tunnel bores a couple times in prior uh, seasons within the multiplayer series, but I've really never done a very efficient or good tunnel bore in my single player series, so I think I'd like to build one for you so that next time you get a map download, you'll have access to that tunnel bore and we'll have a bunch of cool stuff to see. And then finally, I think I want to check out, so yeah, we're getting a good amount of royal jelly and pollen. We're getting pretty close to the amount that we need for an alviary, so that might be a really good build to work on soon too. I'm guessing I could use about nine more of these guys let's see if i can scroll them into my inventory that sounds good because i'm thinking these things must be out of proven frames by now cool we should probably go visit our village too real quick just to see how they're making out so again i keep the industrious the cultivated and the imperial queens populated with proven frames and remember the only difference between proven frames and untreated frames and treated frames are how long they last it doesn't make the bees produce much more but it does make the frames last longer so it's not so often that i have to go replacing it cool now how's this village doing oh yeah look at this man we've got wow three iron golems going on we've got a bunch more children starting to spawn lots of cool stuff Nice. These guys are all here ready to do some trading. Quite pleased with this village the way it turned out. It's pretty neat, huh? Awesome. Wow, there's still a lot of kids running around here too. <laughs> awesome i've not really expanded it much since the last two episodes uh i'm just kind of waiting to see like when are we going to run out of you know doors for kids to populate with right so right now looks like we've still got plenty to go all right guys with that direwolf 20 is going to sign off on episode 43 hope you've enjoyed it uh like i said still a lot of things i'd like to get working on in the season for you guys i don't think i've really even scratched the surface on some of the stuff in the different mods so hope you guys enjoyed this one take it easy